If you've been working out for any length of time, you've probably been asked how much you bench. The truth is, most guys should be able to lift much more weight on the bench press than they are right now. Due to their technique and programming, however, they remain stuck and unable to progress. In this video, I'm going to share the top 5 science-based tips to build a bigger bench press. If you watch till the end, you should have no problem adding weight to the bar and hitting new PRs regularly. Tip number 1. Perfect the setup. Your setup creates a strong, tight, and safe platform to press from. Start by retracting and depressing your scapula. In other words, pinch your shoulder blades back and down. If you fail to do so, your arms actually internally rotate and this places a lot of stress on your rotator cuff. Besides damaging your shoulders, you're actually training the chest less. When you bench press with your back totally flat on the bench, the tension goes to the anterior deltoid muscle instead. By pinching your shoulder blades back and down, you activate your pec muscles more rather than your anterior deltoids. To perform this correctly, act as if there is a pencil in between your shoulder blades and you have to pinch them together to keep the pencil from falling to the floor. As you perform each rep, Make sure you don't protract your scapula by pushing forward with your shoulders. This would undo the crucial factor of keeping your shoulder blades pinched back and down. Another aspect of your setup is fixing your grip width. The gym bros will have you believe you should be flaring your elbows, but by flaring your elbows at or close to 90 degrees, it's very likely putting unnecessary strain on your rotator cuffs. A better idea is to slightly tuck the elbows. Keeping the elbows tucked at 45 to 60 degrees rather than 90 degrees will reduce shoulder stress while activating more of the chest. Just make sure you keep the elbow and wrist stacked. Stacked joints means that one is directly over the other. If I'm standing at the end of the bench where your feet are, I should be able to see your wrists directly in line with your elbows. This minimizes leaking force and maximizes the force transferring into the bar. Tucking the elbows also helps you create an optimal bar path, which leads us to tip number two. Create an efficient bar path. The bar path of the bench is not straight up and down. Analysis of beginners bench pressing show they bench straight up off the chest. Then they move the bar backwards near the top so that the bar is over the shoulders in a more comfortable position. This increases the moment arm of your shoulders. I'm going to save you the biomechanics lesson and say that for the first half of the press, the bar is far from your shoulders so you won't be able to lift as much. On the other hand, analysis of elite bench pressers show they push up and back immediately off the chest. This reduces the distance of the bar from the shoulders. Take this technique from the best benchers in the world. To sum it up, pushing up and back off the chest instead of straight up is a more efficient bar path. You'll be stronger this way which means you'll be able to lift far more weight over time. Tip number three bench press frequently. Studies by hypertrophy researcher Dr. Brad Schoenfeld suggest hitting a muscle two to three times per week is likely a sweet spot. Not only that, but strength is a skill. It takes repeated practice for your nervous system to adapt to the movement and improve your strength. And if you're worried about your ability to recover from bench pressing frequently, here's what I recommend. First, Distribute your training volume efficiently. Rather than doing 16 sets of chest on Monday, you could do 8 sets on Monday and another 8 sets on Thursday. Second, avoid failure. This will help you recover between sessions and ultimately perform more volume. In fact, research suggests training close to failure versus all the way to failure produces similar muscle growth. The only difference is going all the way to failure will produce significantly more fatigue. Tip number four, use DUP. DUP or daily undulating periodization means you change training variables on a day-to-day -day basis. The most common way is to alter rep ranges. For example, instead of training the bench press with three sets of eight reps on Monday and Thursday, 
you could start hitting the bench press with five sets of five reps on Monday and three sets of eight reps on Thursday. This creates both a strength and hypertrophy day. Of course, both will help you build muscle and strength, but they each emphasize strength or hypertrophy. This helps you manage fatigue to increase performance and recovery, as well as boost psychological stimulation. The results speak for themselves. An incredible study by Rea and colleagues compared linear periodization to DUP. It may be hard to believe, but the DUP group experienced literally double the strength gains on the bench press as well as the leg press. So if you're not using DUP for the bench press as well as other big lifts, you may be leaving gains on the table. Tip number five, increase the volume. Volume refers to the total amount of work you perform. Research suggests that the more volume you perform, the more muscle you build at least up to a point. Of course, if you're doing 20 plus sets for chest per week and not seeing muscle growth, then you likely have another problem. But if you're hitting the chest with 10 to 12 sets per week and feel well recovered, it may be a good idea to bump it up to 14 sets of chest per week and see how you progress. In fact, in a properly periodized plan, you will have to fluctuate your training volume over time. Keep in mind, however, that intensity matters. It's easy to add more volume by simply increasing the number of sets performed, but if you're not lifting a weight that is challenging enough, it won't make a difference. I recommend that you start with lower weekly volume, say 5 to 10 sets per muscle, and build up from there while maintaining good form and training with weights heavy enough to stimulate growth. So there you have it, my 5 science based tips to build a bigger bench press. Implement these into your current training program and you'll have no problem increasing your bench press and building your chest. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Also, if you're an intermediate or advanced lifter whose muscle gains have stalled and are looking to jumpstart new muscle growth, grab a copy of my brand new program, Mass 5 Full Body. This is a high frequency full body workout for intermediate and advanced lifters who are looking to take their physique to the next level. And right now, you can get an additional 25% off by using the coupon code MASS25. If you want to learn more, click the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.